So I am going to go over section B, hearing, speech, and vision. So the following are my objectives for this presentation. We're going to illustrate a working knowledge of section B, hearing, speech, and vision. We're going to articulate the intent of section B. We're going to interpret coding options for each new item and when they would be applied. And we're going to apply coding instructions in order to accurately code practice scenarios. Okay. So all items in section B are new. This section includes expression of ideas and wants and understanding of verbal content. These items are only assessed on admission because they are used as risk adjusters for the functional quality measures. Currently, you assess a patient's ability to comprehend and express both basic wants and needs as well as complex for other required documentation. As we go through this presentation, I want you to reflect on how you currently assess a patient's ability to communicate and express themselves. Remember, for section B, we code, and for other required documentation, we score. Okay, so the intent. The intent of, sec of this section is to document the patient's ability to understand and communicate with others. And here are some definitions. Expression of ideas and wants is defined, it is defined the ability to communicate with either verbal or nonverbal expression and excludes language barriers. Understanding verbal content is defined as the ability to understand verbal information in a patient's primary language with or without a hearing aid or device. So we're going to look first at section BB0700, expression of ideas and wants. It might be helpful to take out um, your IRFPI and, and look at that as we're going along. So let's talk a little bit about the rationale. The inability for a patient to express their ideas and wants can cause frustration, social isolation, and decreased mood. The lack of ability to express oneself can be misinterpreted as confusion or cognitive impairment. It is important that we allow patients the time to answer questions and not rush them. It may be helpful to shorten longer questions into parts or ask close-ended questions. Once it is identified that a patient has difficulty expressing their wants and needs, it is essential to determine the underlying cause or causes and determine the best way to facilitate communication for the patient. So how do we do that? There are various ways that expressions of ideas and wants can be assessed. Let's talk about a few different ways. Interactions with patients can provide important information about their ability to communicate. Ensure that the patient can hear you and always use their preferred method of communication. Utilize alternate means of communication, including writing, pointing, or cue cards. You also want to observe the patient's interactions with others in different settings and circumstances, which, in which could include staff, family, or visitors. You want to query your staff, including nurses across all shifts, and your therapy team, as well as your CNA staff. The patient's family can also provide you with valuable information about the patient's ability to communicate with them. The following guidelines are important to remember when assessing a patient's ability to express their needs and wants. The assessment should be conducted in the patient's preferred language. Similar to other required assessments, the need for an interpreter does not impact the coding of this item. The interpreter needs to provide guidance on speech clarity for a patient that speaks a foreign language. Finally, both verbal and nonverbal expression should be considered. All right, so let's look at a snapshot of BB0700. And these are the coding instructions, which are also written on your IRFPI. So the first code you have is a code 4, which the patient is able to express themselves without difficulty. 
They're able to express complex messages and their speech is easy, easy to understand and it's also clear. A code three, a patient would express some difficulty. They may have some word finding problems or some problems finishing their thoughts and their speech may not be completely clear. A code two, which is frequently exhibits difficulty with expression. The patient frequently exhibits difficulty with expressing their needs and ideas. And a code one is rarely or never. They are not able to express themselves or only able to do it rarely, and they are very difficult to understand. So let's talk about some coding tips. A code four states that a patient is able to express complex messages without difficulty. Complex messages includes discussions about medication, discharge planning, and caregiver issues, similar to what is included in complex messages, or complex or abstract information when assessing other assessment items. So we're gonna do a practice scenario now. You need to get out your handheld device. And we have Mr. D, who experienced a stroke and has been undergoing treatments due to medical complications. The nurse reviews his medications with him in, ant in anticipation for his upcoming discharge. Mr. D asks appropriate questions, including how long he will remain on his blood thinner medication and describes for the nurse the number of pills he needs to take each day and the names of the medication. Mr. D's speech is clear and the nurse has no difficulty understanding him. So here are your options. You can code him A, a code four, he expresses without difficulty. You could code him a code three, which would be B, expresses with some difficulty. Code two, letter C, frequently exhibits difficulty with expression, or code, D, or code one, which is D, rarely or never expresses himself. So go ahead at your tables and talk it out and submit your answers. All right, looks like everybody got 100. So for BV0700, the code would be a four. Mr. D was able to engage in conversation about his medication, which is considered a complex topic. Mr. D asks appropriate questions and his speech is clear. So everybody got that one right. So we're gonna try another practice scenario. Mr. P is admitted to an ERF for inpatient rehabilitation following a traumatic brain injury. When conversing the with the nurse, Mr. P has difficulty sometimes finding a word and after struggling to identify the word, will eventually compensate by using other descriptive words. Mr. P recently described coffee as that black hot stuff that I drink in the morning. Oops, sorry, there we go. So now you're gonna use your handheld devices again and we're gonna code this scenario. So is he a code four, A, expresses without difficulty, a code three, which is B, expresses with some difficulty, code two, frequently exhibits difficulty with expression, which is a code C, or code one, rarely or never expresses self, which would be D. All right, are we ready to move on? Did I give everybody enough time? Okay. All right, so we had 93% say that Mr. P would be a three, and that is the correct answer, okay? So BB0700 would be coded a three for this scenario. Mr. P had some word finding problems resulting in some difficulty expressing his needs and ideas. If he frequently had problems, then he would be a two. That's the difference between a two and a three. All right.
Okay, so now we're ready to move on to BB0800, which is understanding verbal content. So here's the item rationale for BB0800. Deficits with understanding verbal content can have a significant impact on a, on a person, which may include limiting interactions with other people and reduce the ability to follow health and safety instructions. And here's the definition. So understanding verbal content is defined as the ability to understand others, including comprehending person-to-person -person communication and the ability to understand and process language. When a patient has deficits with understanding verbal content, it may be due to reduced hearing or reduced comp comprehension. So let's look at some steps for assessment. There are different ways that a patient's ability to understand verbal content can be assessed. Having an interaction with a patient is a great way to determine the level of, their level of understanding. It may also be beneficial to observe the patient interacting in different settings or circumstances. So maybe going in and observing a patient in the therapy gym or in the room talking with their family members. So just looking at them at all different, different interactions is helpful. You want to discuss with direct care staff, which could include your nurses, your aides, your therapy staff, as well as your patient's family. When assessing a patient's ability to understand verbal content, be sure he or, he or she can hear you, or he or she has access to his preferred method of communication. So always make sure the patient's hearing aids are on, the batteries are good, and that they can hear you, or use an amplifying device if need be. In addition, if appropriate, be sure he or she has access to their hearing aids. If the patient seems unable to communicate, offer alternatives such as using an electronic device, writing, pointing, nodding, or cue cards. So these are the coding instructions for section BB0800. And there's four different codes. A code four, which is understands if the patient has clear comprehension without cues or repetition. Code three, usually understands. So the patient understands most conversations, but misses some part or intent of the message or requires cues at times to understand. Code two, sometimes understands. If the patient understands only basic conversations or simple direct phrases, or if the patient frequently requires cues to understand, you would code them a two. A code one, is rarely or never understands. If the patient rarely or never understands your conversations, this is where you would code them a one. Okay, so let's try a couple practice scenarios. Miss H recently had a cancerous brain tumor removed and it affected her ability to comprehend others. The certified nurse's assistant asked Mrs. H or Miss H if she is ready to bathe. Miss H nods and reaches for the washcloth. When the certified nurse's assistant tells Miss H to be careful not to get her head wet in the bandages, Mrs. H continues to wash, the, wash her head and she looks puzzled and asks why. The certified nurse's ex assistant explains to Miss H that she has had surgery, but Mrs. H doesn't understand until a certified nurse's assistant shows her reflection of her head in the mirror. The nurse notes that cues or repetition are frequently required for Mrs. H to understand. Okay, so you're going to use your, your, um, your device, and how would you code this scenario? Code 4 understands, code 3 usually, code 2 sometimes, code 1 rarely or never. Let's start your timer. All right, so I'm going to move on to the answer. So we have 89% said that they would code a C, sometimes understands. And the correct answer is C. So why would it be C? C 
So Mr. H, or Ms. H, requires repetitions or cues to understand and only com comprehends basic conversations. Okay, so that's why we're coding Mrs. H a two. We've got another practice scenario to try. Mr. K has been participating in physical therapy to improve his bed mobility skills. The physical therapist reports that Mr. K occasionally requires repetition of simple instructions during therapy. The nurse also reports that she has to repeat information once yesterday to reinforce her verbal communication with Mr. K. Okay, so now you're gonna try this one. Or is Mr. K a code four, understands? A code three, usually understands? A code two, sometimes understands? Or a code one, rarely or never understands? And we'll start your timer. All right, let's see if we're ready for the answer. Okay, so 92% of you said that we would score this patient a code three, usually understands. So what's the rationale for, for why we coded this patient a three? Mr. K requires cues at times to understand instructions from staff. So Mr. K usually understands the staff and only re requires occasional cues. All right, so let's summarize what we've learned about Section B. Section B is completed on admission only. Always assess the patient in their preferred language. Allow pati the patient to utilize their preferred method of communication. If the patient utilizes visual or hearing devices, ensure that the patient has access to them. Okay, so we're gonna grab our action plan again. This is a good time for you to think about how you, ex how you assess comprehension and expression for other required assessments. Currently in IRFS, we do, we, we do assess patients' expression and comprehension. So how do you do that? Who does that? Can the same process be used to assess the understanding and expression for Section B? Although coding and scoring will be different, is there a way that you can incorporate both together. Again, evaluate your current documentation. Remember, you will still need to answer comprehension and expression questions on other assessments that are required for payment. And it may be beneficial to have staff practice coding different scenarios. And as you head back to your organizations, I want you to remember, keep calm and practice section B. Okay, my favorite part of the, the presentation is questions. <laughs> if there are questions that I didn't cover, you can definitely use the, the cards on your table to submit those. We are looking at them between presentations and we're trying to get you guys answers. If there's something that you need me to clarify about the presentation, I'd be more than happy to try. Hi. Hi. I have a quick question. On expression, is that also include complex for four? It doesn't say that in the documentation where on comprehension it just says that they have to understand complex. So is expression also expressing of complex as well? So I just want to clarify that I got your question correctly. So you're asking about in the expression section, would a code four include complex um, information such as discharge planning, medications, correct. those types? Correct. Thank you, you are correct. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deb. Hi, Deb. My question is, the terms usually and sometimes are really subjective. How will staff interpret where one ends and the other begins? Is it essentially if um, they're able to understand more than 50% or less than 50%, one would be usual versus sometimes? 
So just kind of how, how are people to kind of determine where one ends and where one begins? And then the second part of that question, is it assessed over the full three-day period or is it a one snapshot in time? Because to get usually or sometimes, you really have to take the bulk of that whole time. You can't really do it as an assessment as one sh snapshot, otherwise you're going to get a very different answer. Correct. Okay, so your first question is where does usually end and um, sometimes begin? Um, let me just get the, see if I can clarify this a little bit for you. Okay, so let's think about code three, usually understands. That patient is going to understand almost all of your, your intent or your message. It, they may require cues at times versus sometimes they're going to understand basic conversations. So it almost seems to me, which Anne can also defend, um, a code three, they're going to understand your complex directions, but maybe need some cues about that. Whereas a, a code two, sometimes they only understand basic conversation. So there's, they're not getting the complex. Would you? Yeah, we can add some clarification. And we can add additional clarification. It might be helpful to add a little bit more clarification because it, it is very subjective. And to make sure that you've got staff doing it consistently across you know, the nation, I think we would really want more definition to that. Sure. Thank you. And it is a three-day assessment period, so you're going to look at the patient over the three-day period of time. Is there anything else that I can attempt to answer? <laughs>